January 29, 2020, in a somber and decisive turn of events, a man's life reached its end on the execution gurney. Donnie Cleveland Lance, a Georgia man convicted of a double murder, faced his fate in the stark confines of the state prison in Jackson. Lance, age 66, was sentenced to death for the brutal slaying of Sabrina Joy Lance and Dwight Butch Wood Jr. Their lives were snuffed out on a fateful November day in 1997 within the walls of Wood's home in Jackson County, just northeast of Atlanta. With solemn determination, Lance walked his final steps, refusing a final statement or the embrace of a chaplain's prayer. Bound to the gurney, he lay in a state of eerie stillness, his feet twitching with a mix of anticipation and trepidation. As the warden stepped out at 8.54 p.m., an inevitable countdown commenced. Lethal chemicals began to flow, and Lance's breaths grew shallow. In a matter of minutes, the stillness became absolute, marking the end of a life that had sparked controversy and disbelief for over two decades. Lance's case had been punctuated by an adamant denial. He steadfastly maintained his innocence, a stance that echoed through courtrooms and appeals over the years. Yet this fateful evening, even the highest court in the land, the U.S. Supreme Court, upheld his conviction and denied him the last chance of intervention. This would be the most recent execution to take place inside the death house at Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison. Today on Chasing Crime, we'll be taking a look at the facility and the men condemned to death. Let's get into it. Death Row and the death chamber in Georgia was moved to its current location in June 1980. This would be prompted by a major event in Georgia prison history by one of the most infamous death row inmates. Four convicted murderers would escape from death row at Georgia State Prison. The four would saw through the bars of a window of a fourth floor exercise area. They had also fashioned counterfeit guard uniforms. These were so good that when confronted outside of their unit, the real correctional officers let them go. After leaving the facility, they would call the local news and tell them the tale of their escape. When this was reported by the news, prison officials didn't even know the four were gone. Three were captured two days later near Charlotte, North Carolina, but another and the most infamous inmate, Troy Gregg, would die in a bar fight. In true criminal fashion, witnesses reported that Gregg was drinking heavily at an outlaw biker bar. He attempted to assault a waitress, which the biker gang members did not take lightly. Greg was killed and thrown in the Catawba River. He was best known for his role in the US Supreme Court case, Greg vs. Georgia. This case reaffirmed the death penalty across the United States. Following the moratorium of capital punishment in the US, with the case, Foreman v. Georgia, many speculated that the reason for the escape is that the men on death row did not want to be moved to Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison. But it didn't stop the inevitable. The death house, which includes death row and the execution chamber, is located on the property of Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison. This is the largest state prison in Georgia. Although I would almost consider it a separate facility, the main facility of the prison is the intake prison for the state and serves as the central hub of the Georgia State Correctional System. There is also a special management unit that holds some of the most aggressive and dangerous inmates within the Georgia prison system. Known as the Death House, this is where state-ordered executions take place. The room where the condemned will take their last breath is 8 by 12 with a viewing window for all the witnesses. Next to the chamber is the Death Watch cell where the inmate waits until the time arrives for them to receive their punishment. Before we move on to some stats for Death Row in Georgia, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my content. As of July 2023, there are 37 men on death row with an average age of 53 years old. Currently, the average time on death row is 178 months or almost 15 years. Typically, Death Row isn't a place known for educated men, and the average grade level attained is 10th grade. Since the death penalty was reinstated in the United States in 1976, there have been 76 executions, all of which have taken place at this facility, 
The current method of execution in Georgia is lethal injection. Located in a storage closet near the death chamber is the electric chair, which was officially retired in October 2001. David Loomis Cargill was the last man in Georgia to meet his maker seated in the electric chair. Cargill was convicted for murdering two people during a robbery in 1985. The victims were the parents of four children who were left orphaned. Let's meet a few of these men on death row in Georgia. Virgil Presnell has been on death row since 1976. He was convicted for the assault of two young girls and killing one of them. His execution has been stayed many times and is likely the next up for execution. Cleveland Clark was convicted in a murder for hire plot. He was paid by the father-in-law of the victim because he opposed their marriage on racial grounds. Leonard Drain picked up his victim at the Huddle House, drove her to a secluded area where he assaulted and killed her. He then threw her body in a lake. David Franks stabbed a woman to death after she refused to open the safe in her home. Franks was addicted to drugs and believed the safe contained $100,000. Earlier in the day, he had killed her husband and a worker at the pawn shop business, also trying to obtain money for drugs. Adrian Hargrove killed the pregnant mother of his child after stabbing her 21 times. He also killed her parents. Jerry Heidler was a misguided youth who was taken in by a generous couple and their nine children. Heidler had taken interest in their 16-year-old daughter. The wife had kicked Heidler out of the home after finding this out, but he would come back for revenge and murder the couple and two of their children. He has been on death row since 1999. To Kelvin Martin, murdered his girlfriend's grandparents and her 12-year-old son. The girlfriend initially survived the attack, but would later pass away. Martin pled guilty to the crime, thinking it would result in a life without parole sentence. And when he would receive the death penalty, he withdrew his plea, which the judge allowed. The case would go to trial, where he was found guilty and again sentenced to death. Billy Rollerson would be convicted of murdering three people on Memorial Day in 1993. Rollerson went to a lake in Ware County with a lover's lane and shot two teens parked there, almost seemingly straight out of a horror movie. Later, he came upon a woman unloading her car from the grocery store. He would shoot her multiple times. These are some of the men on death row. Do they deserve a chance at redemption and a life sentence? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We have now taken a look at the death house at Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison a facility that holds men convicted of the most heinous crimes in the state. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.